Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another incredible discovery coming from the vicinity of the solar system. A discovery from our own galaxy, and a discovery that once again surprised everyone. And here we're talking about a discovery inside a really bizarre, enormous structure known as the local bubble. More specifically, local hot bubble. Because it seems to contain some kind of an unusual tunnel. Okay, not like an alien tunnel and not a tunnel we can travel through, but a tunnel that potentially suggests some kind of a galactic network involving interstellar gas. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics of what exactly this bubble is and what we know about it so far. Normally when discussing this bubble, I love using this map by Kevin Jardine that kind of illustrates this in a very easy to understand way. Here in the middle we have our sun, but then, if you travel in any direction for hundreds of light years, you're basically going to find yourself in a somewhat unusual environment containing a much lower density of matter compared to the rest of the Milky Way. Here, the density of hydrogen is about 0.05 atoms per centimeter cube, which is about 10 times less than what we expect from the rest of the galaxy. So it's essentially a kind of an empty bubble, or a low density bubble formed by something extreme millions of years ago. But here it's important not to confuse this with the local interstellar cloud. This is a much much smaller and denser object that technically our sun is either traveling through right now or has traveled through relatively recently. Here the density is 0.3 atoms per centimeter cube and we've actually discussed this cloud many times before in some of the videos in the description. And while in terms of size this is just a few light years across, whereas this bubble is approximately a thousand light years across and so obviously a much larger structure. And one of the ways scientists were able to discover this, and one of the reasons it's called hot bubble and not just local bubble, is actually because the atoms inside here, even though there are not a lot of them, seem to be extremely hot. On average, a typical hydrogen atom is about 1 million Kelvin, suggesting something really powerful in the past. Although a quick side note, even though they're super hot, because the density is so low, it does not mean that some kind of a spaceship would melt here right away. But it does mean that something very, very energetic caused these atoms to gain so much temperature. And it's quite likely that it was the result of this. For millions of years, and specifically in the last 14 million years, there must have been at least 14 to maybe even 20 different supernova, all in a relatively similar location, that basically created so much energy and had such a strong outflow that it kind of created a cavity in the middle, roughly around 1000 light years across. And then, completely by accident, the solar system ended up right in the center. And we actually have quite a lot of evidence for this based on the observations of various sediments right here on planet Earth. In the last few years, scientists have actually discovered a lot of sediments from various individual distant supernova that happened millions of years ago. All of them suggesting powerful events that must have created this bubble and must have caused all of this hydrogen to become super hot. Intriguingly, because this is technically a bubble and is actually expanding, right at the edges of this bubble, scientists discovered over densities that are actively forming new stars right now. There's a video in the description talking about this more, but this basically confirms that this bubble is growing and is also forcing material on the outskirts to start forming new stars. And one of these supernova very likely ended up producing the famous pulsar known as Jimenga. It's a really unusual and a very cool object, that actually forms these bizarre cometary tails as it travels across space. You can learn more about this in the video in the description. But a lot of these initial studies and a lot of these initial assumptions could not really create a perfect three-dimensional map. Basically, we knew that this unusual bubble is very likely different in shape in a vertical direction compared to the horizontal direction, but nobody knew exactly how. In other words, we knew that it was not going to be spherical and had to be most likely much narrower just because we don't expect anything spherical in a galaxy like ours. But now, after a few years, and extremely detailed observations using an X-ray telescope, and specifically the Erosita Observatory, that was able to observe the night skies for a few years, scientists might have officially mapped the bubble in a lot more detail, discovering some cool stuff in the process. Although first, it's important to understand why they were able to do this. The Erosita mission is actually really far from Earth inside the L2 Lagrange point. And that means that it no longer gets any effects from the geocorona. Geocorona is a structure produced by our sun that usually forms very diffuse X-rays, produced by the interaction of the sun 
with the Earth's atmosphere. And this can actually extend up to about 600,000 kilometers away from the surface, affecting X-ray observations close to planet Earth. But Erosita was much farther away, one and a half million kilometers. And so it was actually in a perfectly X-ray quiet location where it was able to scan everything, dividing the sky into 2,000 separate sections. And so by studying each of these sections, eventually researchers realized we can actually create a three-dimensional map of this unusual local bubble. And so Michael Yoon of the Max Planck Institute, and whose study you can find in the description below, produced the map you see right here. This beautiful image shows us a lot of the locations near the Sun, but most importantly, shows us the actual shape of the local hot bubble. And yeah, it's definitely not a sphere. It actually seems to resemble what's known as a bipolar nebula kind of similar to other nebulae we've seen before. And here you can see that the surface seems to be much bumpier, it also seems to be extremely asymmetrical, and it's a lot larger in the vertical direction compared to horizontal. And that actually makes sense. There's a lot more stuff in the disk of the galaxy, or basically in the horizontal direction, compared to the vertical location. And so it's easier for this bubble to expand vertically as opposed to horizontally. But once again, the only reason this was even visible is because of those really hot atoms of hydrogen that produce X-rays with a very specific frequency, allowing the researchers to map everything. But this temperature seems to actually have a kind of a gradient. So basically here it's not just asymmetrical in terms of shape, it's also asymmetrical in terms of temperature. And this actually confirms the supernova hypothesis. The only way this is possible is if there were lots of different supernova going off one after another in just a few million years. This would produce the asymmetry and of course the temperature gradient, resulting in what you see right here. But as I mentioned, there was also a bit of a mystery, an unusual tunnel. A bizarre interstellar tunnel stretching towards Centaurus constellation, which seems to contain cooler interstellar medium gas flowing across the bubble. And this, of course, was a really unexpected discovery, but a discovery that was technically hypothesized back in the 70s. A much, much older study by Donald Cox and Barham Smith proposed that various massive supernova can actually create an unusual interconnected tunnel mesh, or essentially a tunnel network, that would very likely stretch across the entire galaxy and would contain very low density gas with very low magnetic field, possibly connecting to other similar structures and possibly doing something. But exactly what and what purpose it would serve is of course a mystery. As a matter of fact, right now, it's kind of unknown what it connects to, but the scientists in the study speculate it might connect to a well-known Canis Majoris tunnel, which then connects to the Gum Nebula and another superbubble that's visible right here. The superbubble in this case would also be produced by a somewhat similar event. And the cool thing is that you can actually explore all of this by yourself in one of the incredible simulations with a link in the description that kind of helps you visualize what all of this looks like. And so the sun is right there, it's a very very tiny object in the middle, but it's surrounded by a lot of these additional features, many of them produced through various supernova, and looks like many of them connected. And so right now this is a really cool discovery and a really cool map, but it's still unknown what exactly this network is, and even if there is a network. There seems to be a tunnel, but we don't really know yet if it's connected to anything. If it is though, and if this is actually a completely new discovery of something we never knew before, this would definitely change our perspective about the Milky Way, and also eventually help us understand its history and what role these tunnels and these networks play in its development. But we're not going to know much more about this until future observations and future discoveries, or until we find similar structures either somewhere else in the Milky Way or maybe in some other nearby galaxies. Right now, the only thing we're kind of certain about is that the local hot bubble seems to be the result of up to 20 massive supernova in the last 14 million years, and the solar system is basically traveling right through the middle. But at least for now, everything else is still a hypothesis. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos, because this is a super fascinating concept. But until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.